All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, I'm really excited because I got something really cool in the mail, and that is the Samsung T7 Touch, which is an external SSD with USB 3.2 Gen 2 speed that basically gets you a really fast transfer speed, and it has a fingerprint reader. And this allows you to encrypt and then unlock the SSD without actually having to install the Samsung software on every single computer you're using it on. You only need to install the software on the very first computer to set it up. And then from there, you can just unlock it and the drive will automatically encrypt itself and only decrypt itself when you put your finger on it. It will then through hardware only mount the drive and this allows you to decrypt the drive just with your fingerprint without having to open up their own software. And I think it's a really great solution. All right, so first off, I wanna get a few things out of the way. Samsung was nice enough to send me this two terabyte external hard drive, the T7 Touch, for free for a review. They had no stipulations on I had to post a review or anything. They were just kind enough to send it to me. And as long time viewers of this channel will know, I really like the T7 line of hard drives. I have three of them, the T3, five, and seven. And overall, I found them to be really great external SSDs with really good performance and super light and very portable. All right, so now first off, let's talk about the build. The build of the T7 is a little bit different than that of the rest of the T series. It is a little bit thinner and a little bit longer than the other drives. And so it won't fit in the same cases that the T3 and the T5 fit in. You will have to get a special case for it. And it is a little bit heavier, but this is probably due to the fingerprint reader, though this is just a two ounce drive. You're not gonna be feeling the weight of this at all. They're super lightweight, just a little bit heavier than the usual ones. And I actually think that the T7 line has a lot better build quality than the previous lines did. My T5, if you hit it, you can actually hear the metal hitting itself because it doesn't have great dimensioning. With the T7, there are clearly really good tolerances and it's not flexing nearly as much. It does feel a lot more stable in your hand and I'm really enjoying the form factor of it. All right, and so now onto pricing. Currently on Amazon right now, the T7 Touch one terabyte is $190. And so that's a little bit more expensive than a standard one terabyte external hard drive, but it is really fast and it does have that fingerprint reader. Across the board on all the capacities, the non-fingerprint readers cost about $30 cheaper than the ones with the fingerprint readers. So it's about a $30 price increase if you want that fingerprint reader, which depending on your workflow can be completely worth it or completely useless if you don't care about encryption. There are three capacity sizes, 500 gigabytes, a terabyte, and two terabytes. And this is the two terabyte version and I really have been enjoying it. Unfortunately, in my excitement to get this drive, I completely ripped open the box because I was so excited to get messing with it. And so it's not gonna make a great unboxing, but it also does come with two USB cables, a USB type A and a type C connector, though both of them are type C connecting into the SSD. And so these are USB 3.2 Gen 2 cables, which is really confusing, I know. I think that's name changed three times apparently. And so it's kind of confusing. Basically, it's got 10 gigabits of bandwidth to work with, which could theoretically give us about 1.2 gigabytes per second read and write, though with overhead, that's gonna be pretty hard to get to. Though I did find these drives to be a lot faster than their predecessors, because the predecessors use the USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, which were only up to five gigabit per second, which we could get about 450, 500 megabytes read and write out of. And so this essentially doubled that. With my write speeds, I was able to get 835 megabytes per second, and my read speeds were about 900 megabytes per second. It was a very fast drive, and I was really impressed with the performance, though it does not completely saturate that USB 3.2 Gen 2 connection, but it's pretty darn close. And I'd say it's a very nice speed increase, though it is most certainly not their fastest external SSD. If you really want fast speeds, you can upgrade to the Samsung X5, which is basically just an NVMe drive with a Thunderbolt 3 connection. And so those give you 2.8 gigabytes a second, which is insanely fast. And that's because of that incredibly fast Thunderbolt 3 bus. Though those are gonna be considerably more expensive and not nearly as small of a form factor as the T7 line is. All right, and so now let's get onto the big question. How well does the fingerprint reader work in the real world? How useful is it? Do you think it's worth it? All those wonderful questions. And honestly, in my opinion, I think a fingerprint reader or a external passcode that you have to enter is probably the best way to encrypt a drive if you're going to be going between multiple systems. And so if you live in a single ecosystem, so you're using all Windows machines, all Linux machines, or all Mac machines, it's not that big of a deal to format drives in an encrypted format. 
With a Mac, you can just go to Disk Utility and format any external hard drive as an encrypted volume. You then just give it a password, and then anytime you plug that external hard drive into a Mac, it's just going to simply ask for the password and you enter it in to decrypt it. It's really easy to use and works really well. But if you try to plug that exact same hard drive into a Linux machine or a Windows PC, you're not going to be able to see any of the data on it or decrypt the drive. That's because it's using Mac's ecosystem. Now there are obviously third-party encryption tools out there that can allow you to go between any computers and encrypt a drive. Though they all require one thing, software to be installed on every single computer. And so if you're constantly going in between computers, especially computers you don't have control over, you're not going to be able to just install software on every single one of these computers. And even if you could, it'd be really annoying to do and always having to decrypt your drives like that. And so because of that, a hardware option is honestly perfect. Basically what happens is after you've set up the fingerprint reader on the T7, all you have to do is plug in the hard drive to any computer. And at first, before you've put your fingerprint on the fingerprint reader, it mounts a small read-only partition, which has the Mac and the Windows software already there for you if you need to install it there. But the rest of the drive is completely invisible. Then once you put your fingerprint on the fingerprint reader, it basically ejects the drive itself then reconnects the drive, but this time all of your files are already there. It's a really easy to use setup and it just works. Out of the box, it's formatted with XFAT, which is by far the most compatible file system between Windows, Linux, and Mac. Though on Linux, you either have to buy it or install it. So for my Synology, I think it's a three or $4 package from the package center that allows you to use XFAT because it is a Windows proprietary file system that everybody has to pay license royalty to. It's why you actually can't have it installed on Raspbian out of the box. Instead, you have to install it. I don't know how they get around the licenses, but I know for a fact that you have to install it on a Raspberry Pi, though it is free. But once you do that, it works with any computer and you don't have to have the Samsung software installed on there, which is really nice to have. Quite frankly, I was not very impressed by the Samsung software. It was really kind of clunky and just annoying to use, and it kept opening, and I had to completely reboot my computer the first time after I installed it. But after that, it just works really well, and I never have to open the software again. Then if something were to happen and your fingerprint was not being read, maybe you got a cut on your fingertip and it just wasn't gonna register it or anything like that, it mounts the software installation on there. So even if you don't have internet, you can just double click on that and use that to install the software on a Windows or a PC computer. And so that gives you a secondary option if you need to enter your passcode, because there's also an option to use a passcode as a backup from your fingerprint, which I think is overall a really great setup. And so because of this hardware option, I was able to plug my T7 into my Synology NAS, hit my fingerprint on the fingerprint reader, and then when I logged into DSM, because I had XFAT installed, I was able to just read and write files to it without any problems. It is a really great option and really bypasses the need for clunky encryption software that every manufacturer tries to make and sell, but none of them are that useful. All right, and so now without further ado, let's go ahead and try it out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hook up my drive. And so you can see right there that the light comes on. And so now, as you can see right here, if I go ahead and open it up, we will see that this partition is read only and it's got the executable for both Windows, Mac, and tells you how to get to it on Android. However, now I'm just gonna put my fingerprint reader right here. You can see it light up blue and the disc was ejected and now it's going to be reconnected, but this time it has all the files on there from my thing and it is really just that easy. I do not have the Samsung software installed on this computer and it was just able to mount for me just like that. And so honestly, it's been really easy to use and it seems to work really well across everything. All right, and so now what everybody's obviously been waiting for is a Blackmagic speed test on this drive. So I'm just gonna do, go ahead and do that. And remember, this is writing and reading to an encrypted drive. My Mac is not encrypting it. Instead, whatever chip is inside of it is actually doing the encryption for us. And so overall, we got some pretty fast speeds, but not as fast as the advertised one gigabyte per second read and write. Though, honestly, these are pretty good contenders. And I'm not sure if this could possibly be due to the encryption or what, or the fact that maybe Mac is just not optimized for XFAT as it would for another partition. 
Though I am a little bit wary of just formatting this drive for myself, and honestly with XFAT, the ability to plug it into any single computer and have it work is a really great benefit and outweighs the 150 megabytes per second I might get if I were to change it over. But overall, this thing is really fast and works really well. Another thing I actually want to give praise for is the USB-C cable that came with it is so much better than the one that came with the T5. The T5 one was absolutely awful. I don't know why it was so bad. It honestly half the time would not connect or just drop connections as I was trying to transfer files. And so I ended up just throwing it away because it was entirely useless. This one is good, it's long enough to be useful, and honestly it has a really good locking method in there. And so it's not gonna fall out if you're doing large transfers. All right, and so now to finish off the video, I'll go through and show you how to set it up from a computer. So this is my laptop where I've installed the software on, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in, but I'm not going to touch the fingerprint reader, and so we're going to see the Samsung software pop up. And so now it's giving me the option to use that password to fail back, and so I'm gonna type that in now. And so now it's decrypted the drive using the password instead of using my fingerprint. And so we've got a few options in here in settings. We can edit the fingerprints and actually add multiple. You can add up to four fingerprints. These can be four for yourself, so maybe two fingers, two thumbs, or it could maybe be four different people you want access to this drive. And so you really have a lot of options here. And then adding another fingerprint is really easy. You just click add fingerprint. And you can just tap it a bunch of times. And it's just that easy. It works really well, and now it will just work for my thing. Other than that, there's not a ton of options. You can change its name. And for some reason, you have to enter your password to do that. And then you can also turn off encryption here. So you can say security mode off. It will delete your password and your fingerprints. So we're just gonna say confirm, enter our password again. And so now you'll be able to mount the drive. We'll go ahead and eject it and put it back in. And so now we'll be able to mount the drive without having to enter our fingerprint or a password. And so it will be just an unencrypted drive if you choose to use that. But if you're gonna be doing it like that, honestly, why not just buy the T7 and save yourself 30 bucks? And so doing a Blackmagic speed test now with a decrypted drive, we get basically the exact same speeds as we were getting with the encrypted drive, which means that the encryption engine or whatever chip is encrypting the drive on there is not causing any kind of bottleneck. It is just as fast as the rest of the transfers. And so overall, it's really easy to set up. We can go in and turn security mode back on, create a password, and we can also add in a fingerprint. And so now, just like that, it's encrypted again. And so honestly, with the way this works, I think the drive is actually gonna be always encrypted behind the scenes, even if security mode is off. It's just to automatically decrypt the drive anytime you connect it with security mode off, because otherwise they'd not be able to have some parts of the file system be encrypted, some parts not, and be able to switch back and forth so quick and easy without always having it encrypted and decrypted by its encryption engine. And so honestly, that's probably why we got the exact same transfer speeds for encrypted and non-encrypted, because it was still encrypting the data, it's just that the keys were automatically mounted anytime it was connected, versus mounting only if a fingerprint was successfully registered. All right, so that's gonna be it for this review. And so overall, my closing remarks is, I've actually been really impressed by this drive. I really like the fingerprint reader, and I think it makes encryption and decryption so much easier for most people who are gonna be going in between multiple computers and multiple systems. If you have an external drive, that's probably what you're doing, and you need it to be able to work with whatever computer you're on without having to install extra software all the time. And so fitting that bill is what this does, and I think it does a really good job at it. It was really easy to use and really fast. It is definitely not the cheapest external SSD, but for the performance and that fingerprint reader, I think it's honestly worth it for a lot of people if you need that encryption. If you don't, the T7 is a great option as well. I've overall really liked the T-line of Samsung SSDs, and I've not had any issue with any of mine. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials or products you'd like me to review, and if you wanna send me something, get in contact. And have a good one, bye.